So like I promised you guys, here's the third video of the day. Grab a piece of paper and let's go. Hello and welcome to MK's Medical Review Series. My name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. This is his on my YouTube channel where we look at medical topics in depth. Today we're going to be looking at contraceptive implants. If you have any subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon to be receiving notifications of such amazing content every time I post. This is part five of a nine part video as we discuss contraceptive methods on the channel. In the previous five videos, we talked about contraceptive basics, we talked about oral contraceptives, we talked about transdermal and vaginal rings, we talked about the injectable contraceptives, and in this video, we'll look at the implants. Just to remind you, remember that contraception is the intentional prevention of conception through various devices, sexual practices, chemicals, drugs, or surgical procedures. There are different classes, largely divided into the hormonal-based methods, which we talked about in detail and we're still talking about. We talked about, we'll talk about the non-hormonal based methods and as well as the surgical methods. In this video, we'll talk about subdermal implants. Remember that these are going to be subdermal contraceptives that are going to be releasing a progestin. There are two types that are used generally, Implanon, which is going to be consisting of etonogestrel and Jadel, which is going to be consisting of levonogestrel. Remember that a subdermal implant may be inserted at any time during the menstrual cycle. However, if unprotected sexual intercourse has occurred within the past month, another form of contraception actually should be used concurrently until pregnancy can be reliably excluded by a negative pregnancy test or by the subsequent occurrence of the menses. If the implant is actually inserted within the first five days of the menstrual cycle, then no backup contraceptive method is actually needed. If it's inserted after this time frame, then you need an extra backup method of contraception, just like with the other hormonal based types of contraception that is going to be lasting for at least seven days. Remember that the implant may be inserted immediately after a spontaneous or an induced abortion or immediately postpartum regardless of the breastfeeding status because they are only going to be consisting of progestins, which are not going to be affecting the quality of the milk. Contraindications are pretty similar to those that we cover with the progestin-only contraceptives. Like I said, the very first two videos of these series are very important. I will leave them tagged at the end of this video. If you haven't watched those, head over there. What exactly are you waiting for? So remember that most adverse effects are similar to those of the other progestins, such as irregular vaginal bleeding, amenorrhea, as well as a headache. And removing the implant, which is usually done uh, when the implant is no longer effective, actually requires you to cut through the skin to make an incision and after the implant is removed, the ovarian activity actually normalizes immediately. But remember that removal of the implant is actually much more difficult and takes a bit longer than insertion of the implant. So we'll begin with Implanon. Remember that the Implanon is going to be consisting of a single celastic rod that is inserted subdermally under local anesthesia into the upper arm and it's going to be releasing a progestogen that's etonogestrel, 25 to 70 micrograms, an average of about 50 micrograms at uh, 12 months daily. And the dose released decreases actually with time, which is actually metabolized to a third generation progestogen, which is known as disogestrel. Remember that it's going to be lasting for three years and thereafter can be easily removed and a further implant can be inserted if need be. Although some further studies have been showing that the efficacy can actually persist up to five years. Mm -hmm. Remember that the pregnancy rate in the first year is about 0.05 with perfect use and the rates with typical use are also usually the same. The implant is actually a four centimeter match stick. Uh, it's a single rod. Unlike Jadel, which has two rods, this one is a single rod and it can be inserted using a trocar subdermally. So it's going to be inserted over the, the site, over the triceps, about eight centimeters from the, sorry about that, about eight centimeters from the medial epicondyle of the humerus, as you can see, eight to 10 centimeters from the medial epicondyle, and about three uh, to five centimeters behind the sulcus, between the biceps muscle and the triceps muscle. You shouldn't insert the implant in the sulcus. Then the groove between the biceps, like I said, and the triceps should be avoided and the is no skin uh, incision that is actually required when you're inserting the implant on. 
So before inserting or removing the implant, the healthcare provider must complete the three hours of the manufacturer sponsored training and you must actually know how to insert these. I will leave a link in the description for the insertion and the removal. You can head over to the one of the sites that I found on YouTube, one of the pages I found on YouTube on insertion of the Implanon as well as insertion of the Jadel. So I will leave these tagged in the description. Just head over to the description and click on the links, watch the videos. They are actually going to be helpful if you haven't seen it being done in real life. So remember that the Implanon is particularly useful for women who are having difficulty remembering to take the pill and those who have a highly effective long-term or who want highly effective long-term contraception. The implant is radio opaque and it makes it very easy to localize at the time of removal. If you can't really remove it, you can actually get some imaging. And also the insertion applicator is easy to use, so the implant is less likely to be inserted too deep or too superficial if you follow the instructions. There is a rapid return to fertility when it is removed. And generally, the women should be carefully counseled about the change in the bleeding pattern, especially with implant on. The irregular bleeding is actually very common, and it's a major reason why women actually discontinue this type of contraception quite early. Healthcare professionals need to be specially trained for the implant on insertion and removal. And remember that the removal can be difficult if the implant is inserted too deep. And if the implant cannot be palpated, you can actually localize it with a high frequency ultrasound. In terms of Jadel, remember that this is an implant that's going to be consisting of two rods that are impregnated with levonorgestrel, about 75. And although the Jadel can be removed at any time, it's usually going to be kept there for up to five years. Generally, for the women that are weighing over 60 kg, the implant actually should be changed after four years. The removal of the Jadel, just like with the implant on, is actually much more difficult than the insertion. It may take longer and it may involve more pain than the insertion. The site of insertion is similar just with like the Implanon and the contraindications are similar to other types of progestin containing contraceptives and also the side effects are similar to other progestin con containing contraceptive methods such as irregular bleeding where women may have bleeding between periods, longer periods, spotting or even amenorrhea. Remember that if a patient has not used any hormonal contraceptive in the past month, the Jadel should be inserted within the seven days of the onset of the menses. And if it's inserted after this, they must use an extra type of additional non-hormonal barrier method, for example, such as a condom in the next seven days until it's actually effective. Here is a Jadel implant with a trocar. I will also leave a link in the description for the insertion and the removal of Jadel. I really hope you enjoyed this video on the subdermal implants. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the bell notification icon to receive your notifications of such amazing content every time I post. To Zambia and beyond, my name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. Until next time, bye-bye.